Ye servants of God, your master proclaim and publish abroad his wonderful name. Please stand for a call to worship, ye servants of God, hymn number 565. and minds to him. Today for announcements, we have a few. First, uh, this is the last day of the Parade of Cans collection for the corner table. So I just wanted to put that out. And I also want to highlight the insert, the pink insert, the Moravian Day of Service. Please read through that about how that's been instituted through the sins of the Moravian Church. And, and just a note that we are we're in the process of actually getting some water filters that we're going to actually assemble for Honduras. And we're doing this through the Border World News Mission. And we're, we're working on having that as an activity actually on that Sunday for the, the day of service. Next, I got uh, uh, Rachel's been working on the teacher wish, wish list for Claremont Elementary. And that's coming up, so be ready to pick an apple next week for the teacher for the teacher wish list. And right now we got about 21 teachers that have requests that have come in, so a, a good response. This is an opportunity for us to help a school and teachers out there. Uh, a lot of times they don't have all the resources they need, so this is a great way that we, we can help them. Okay, with that, I think Jane has an apple. Speaking of an apple, <laughs> speaking of an apple for, for the uh, teacher, also the sign-up sheet in the back is for if you would like to, uh, to reserve an apple pie or a chicken pie, the sign-up sheet is in the back. I'm going to be pulling it off today because it's been here for over a month, and we can go ahead and get the features done. Wanted to remind you, we are making apple pies, so on Friday uh, at 1 o'clock, if you're looking for something to do, come join us. It's a lot of fun, and we're in and out in two hours and make 120 pies. We really hustle. Then again, on Thursday the 21st, that's the weekend that we need everybody's help. If you get a neighbor, 
to a friend, anyone to come help us with these chicken pies because it's quite an ordeal and a task, but we get it done. And when we have many hands, it helps with the task not being quite as hard for everybody. So don't forget your sign-up sheets in the back if you want chicken or apple pies. Thank you. Before we go to prayer concerns, are there any other announcements for the congregation? The choir practice starts this coming Wednesday? Yes. Okay. And what time? Uh, seven seven o'clock. And then on the, on the third page. Okay. The choir practice this week? Choir. And Bell start the week after. <laughs> All right. Let's move on to prayer requests and definitely refer to the ones that are in your bulletin. And I know Pastor Betty has a little update for us. Yeah, I just wanted to let everyone know that um, Thomas Joey um, Arnold's service was yesterday. It was truly a blessing to be able to serve this family. And I feel like that what they saw was uh, the comment was that true Christians people that were serving one another and serving Christ. And um, so we, I feel like, uh, try to be a good representative uh, to the community and to them uh, as uh, New Hope and the church. But thank you. Thank you to those who attended. And bless you for all the prayers that you brought up to the family and continue to pray for them. And definitely, Betty, we, we praise the Lord for you jumping in and serving that family. Thank you. You know, there's many on the list. You know, there's still people suffering from the storm damage that we had here a couple of weeks ago. We had the hurricanes that came through Florida. So several activities bringing hardship to many people. At this time, let us uh, go to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious Father, you know, through, through life we have many ups and downs, and you know the down times are, can be hard, and we, we, we seek you. Sometimes we wonder if, you know, sometimes we get frustrated and wonder if you're there. But Father, we know that through you, you, you can bless us with joy through the good and the bad. So, Lord, please help us to find that joy and happiness. Lead us to that. And also, Father, lead us away from all forms of hate, bitterness, and anxiety. And build in us this, a hatred of evil. Father, we just come to you and in awe of how gracious you are to us. We struggle with pride getting in the way, getting in the way of us loving our neighbors, having bad thoughts or having saying something inappropriate about somebody else. But the amazing thing, Lord, is you have forgiven us through your son, Jesus Christ. For those that have faith in our hearts that Jesus is our Lord and God. Heavenly Father, for this worship, we pray that you lead Pastor Betty in her message and open our hearts and minds to your word. There's a lot of things that can be said and can be read out of your scriptures, but if we don't open that up and let the Spirit in, we can miss it. Thank you, Lord. And help us to focus on you through the week as we go through our work, play, school, and any activities we're engaged in and engaging with our neighbors. Help us to love our neighbors. In Jesus' name, amen. Now it's time for our birthdays. And I gotta say, in memory of Jimmy Buffett, it's another trip around the sun, so... That was kind of a little sad news this past weekend. Uh, but for those that are doing the trip around the sun, Nancy Miller, yay! Anita Sizzle, yay! Woo! Woo
You know, we actually went to Bikini Mirror in fourth grade. <laughs> Janie Setzer. Ashley Lars Larson. Yay. Yeah, last but not least, Steve Bumgarner. All right. <laughs> Let us join in our birthday hymn number 447. continue our service as we pray together the liturgy for national occasions on page 139 in our hymnal if you would please stand <laughs> love toward us and the faithfulness of the love Lord endures forever. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who live upon it. Let all people everywhere know that the supreme God has power over the human kingdom and that he can give it to anyone he chooses, even to the least important. The counsel of the Lord stands forever, the thoughts of his heart to all generations. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord. Praise the Lord. Not to us, Lord, not to us, but to your name give glory. For the sake of your steadfast love and your
almighty God, ruler of nations, to whose grace we owe the manifold blessing of this land. We confess that in many ways we have turned aside from your commandments, and it is because of your steadfast love that we are not consumed. You offer us mercy and forgiveness, though we have rebelled against you and have not obeyed your command to walk in your laws, which you have set before us. We pray, Lord, that you will guide and bless all who are in places of authority, protect them from violence, to fill the hearts of the people with respect and love for them, because you have established their authority. Raise up for us leaders who will carry out all your purpose, and in patience and courage will depend on you. Make of this nation an instrument for the promotion of peace, freedom, and righteousness. May it be a haven for the oppressed of other lands, a home of happiness for all who dwell within its borders. And may our commitment to liberty and justice for all be preserved for the generations to come. Hear us, gracious Lord God. Guide us and our leaders through the spirit of Christ's love as we struggle with matters of teaching and learning, home and family, health and security, work and justice. Turn the hearts of all people to you, that they may seek eternal life through Jesus Christ, who redeems us and our world. Grant wisdom to those who are the family of faith. Enable us to accept the authority of government for your sake, ready for every good work, abstaining from every form of evil, and paying to all whatever is due them. As citizens of this nation, may we bring credit to our Savior in all we do. Grant to the people of this and all other lands a love of peace and order, and that the nations shall learn war no more. Hasten the day when the kingdom of the world shall become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ and he will reign forever and ever. Hear us, gracious Lord and God. Amen. As you entered worship, you had the opportunity to give of your tithes and your offerings. 
Always remember that it is to God that we give our praises, we give our prayers, and we give our gifts. So let us go to the Lord in prayer. Most gracious and almighty God, Lord, we thank you for the abundance that you have blessed and given to each one of us. Lord, we thank you for the freedom that we have to come and worship in your house today and to read your holy word. Lord, we pray that as your people that we would give back to you, not give sparingly, but give out of our great abundance, of the abundance that you have given to each one of us. Lord, may you bless the giver. And may all that is given, may it be given to serve you in a greater way. For it is in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you. 
Let us now transition our hearts into the reading and the hearing of God's holy word. Jeremiah 15, 15 through 21, Psalms 26, Romans 12, 9 through 21, and the Gospel of Matthew 16, 21 through 28. Hear now the holy word of God. Jeremiah 15, 15 through 21. Then I said, Lord, you know what's happening to me. Please step in and help me. Punish my persecutors. Please give me time. Don't let me die young. It's for your sake that I am suffering. When I discovered your words, I devoured them. They are my joy and my heart's delight. I bear your name, O Lord God of heaven's armies. I never joined the people in their merry feasts. I sat alone because your hand was on me. I was filled with indignation at their sins. Why then does my suffering continue? Why is my wound so incurable? Your help seems as uncertain as a seasonal brook, like a spring that has gone dry. This is how the Lord responds. If you return to me, I will restore you so you can continue to serve me. If you speak good words rather than worthless ones, you will be my spokesman. You must influence them. Do not let them influence you. They will fight against you like an attacking army, but I will make you as secure as a fortified wall of bronze. They will not conquer you, for I am with you to protect you and rescue you. I, the Lord, have spoken. Yes, I will certainly keep you safe from these wicked men. I will rescue you from their cruel hands. Psalm 26, a psalm of David. Declare me innocent, O Lord, for I have acted with integrity. I have trusted in the Lord without wavering. Put me on trial, Lord, and cross-examine me. Test my motives and my heart, for I am always aware of your unfailing love, and I have lived according to your truth. I do not spend time with liars or go along with hypocrites. I hate the gatherings of those who do evil, and I refuse to join in with the wicked. I wash my, wash my hands to declare my innocence. I come to your altar, O Lord, singing a song of thanksgiving and telling of all your wonders. I love your sanctuary, Lord, the place where your glorious presence dwells. Don't let me suffer the fate of sinners. Don't condemn me along with murderers. Their hands are dirty with evil schemes, and they constantly take bribes. But I am not like that. I live with integrity, so redeem me and show me mercy. Now I stand on solid ground, and I will publicly praise the Lord. Romans 12, 9-21 Don't just pretend to love others. Really love them. Hate what is wrong. Hold tightly to what is good. Love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring honoring each other. Never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. Rejoice in our confident hope. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. When God's people are in need, be ready to help them. Always be eager to practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Don't curse them. Pray that God will bless them. Be happy with those who are happy and weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with each other. Don't be too proud to enjoy the company of ordinary people and don't think you know it all. Never pay back evil with more evil. Do things in such a way that everyone can see you are honorable. Do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. Dear friends, never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. For the scriptures say, I will take revenge. I will pay them back, says the Lord. 
Instead of your enemies, are, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals of shame on their heads. Don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. In Matthew 16, 21 through 28, Jesus predicts his death. From then on, Jesus began to tell his disciples plainly that it was necessary for him to go to Jerusalem and that he would suffer many terrible things at the hands of the elders, the leading priests, and the teachers of religious law. He would be killed, but on the third day he would be raised from the dead. But Peter took him aside and began to reprimand him for saying such things. <coughs> Heaven forbid, Lord, he said, this will never happen to you. Jesus turned to Peter and said, Get away from me, Satan. You are a dangerous trap to me. You are seeing things merely from a human point of view, not from God's. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross, and follow me. If you try, try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? Is anything worth more than your soul? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in the glory of his Father and will judge all people according to their deeds. And I tell you the truth, some standing here right now will not die before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Here ends the reading. May God bless the reading of his holy word today, and may he give to each one of us clear understanding. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you this day that you have drawn us to yourself, and that you care with us with an endless love, and you desire that we know the Lord Jesus as our personal Savior. Thank you, Lord, that Jesus, your beloved Son, was willing to take up his cross and walk the cruel journey to Calvary. Thank you that he was willing to set aside his glory, the glory that you had given him before the creation of the world. You, Creator God, you chose Jesus to come and become our sin substitute. So that whoever believes on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ will be saved and receive eternal life. We believe that you, Jesus, are the living Christ, the Son of the living God. You died for the sins of everyone. Then on the third day, Christ rose. You rose that we might have eternal life with you, the Father God, forevermore. Father, this morning, let us speak the words of Simon Peter. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Lord, I thank you for my voice. And I thank you for the privilege that you have given me to speak your truth. Bless the words of my lips. Speak, O Lord, for your servant is to listen. You speak, and I will step aside. I pray all this in the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, a young man who was eager to make his way to the top, he went to a well-known millionaire businessman, and he asked him, Tell me, what's the first reason for your real success? The businessman answered with hesitation. Hard work. After a lengthy pause, the young man asked, well, what's the second reason? Today in our scripture, we deal with us as Christians many times seeking the easy way out. Jesus and his disciples were at uh, Caesarea Philippi. Their ministry has come to a point 
and it's been a stunning success. But it's not been easy. The crowds are growing larger. People are eager to hear Jesus speak. And the disciples themselves maybe have gotten a little bit caught up in all of this prestige and everything that's going on around Jesus. He's important, so they're important. We remember last week in last week's gospel when Jesus asked his disciples, who do you say that I am? And we remember that Simon Peter answered correctly, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Well, this is one of the most dramatic moments in the pilgrimage of Jesus with his disciples. That they are beginning to understand who he really is. But then suddenly, Jesus starts changing the subject. And he starts telling them that the crowds are going to turn against him. He's going to be crucified. And the third day, he'll be raised. Well, now think about it. The disciples didn't want to hear this. They wanted Jesus to remain there with them. They didn't want to think about the possibility of suffering and struggling. So Simon Peter took it upon himself, the bold one that he is, and he said, Forbid it, Lord, that these things should happen to you. And we know in here the, what seems to be harsh words from Jesus. Get behind me, Satan. You are not on the side of God, but of man. Perhaps Jesus called Simon Peter Satan because of the experience that he had in the wilderness. We'll remember Satan tried to entice Jesus, remember? He tried to really make a million-dollar trade with Jesus. You'll do this, turn stones to bread. If you will leap off the pinnacle of the temple, or if you will bow down and worship me. Well, many times we think, and you hear the example, that Satan is like this little red figure that's got a pitchfork, and he's coming to get you. And he, But really, that's far from true. Because when Satan comes around, he comes... And it's like sin. It can almost look beautiful. And he entices you to be like the person that comes in the $400 suit. Probably $1,000 now. Uh, he's got a slick tongue, polished. Great salesman. He, he actually offers instant glamour, instant success, an instant sense of gratification to you. Satan thrives on the darkness of the world that we're living in today. Doesn't bother him a bit. Because he wants to pull us down. And yet you remember Simon Peter said, forbid it Lord that you should have to suffer and die. Peter didn't want to see Jesus suffer and die. And when we think about this, we have to realize that nowhere along the way did Jesus take the easy way out. He was not lured into the easiness. I mean, he stepped aside from his glory and came to earth as a man, fully man, but still full of God. And he came and he walked away a sense of the cross. Jesus was a man of his word. He was a man of integrity. And he was obedient to the Father. The pathway to Christianity the success is a sense, one of self-denial. Now, we don't want to hear that. Because we live in a society today that it's me, myself, and I. Don't be telling me that I don't deserve this, because I deserve all this good. We don't want to deny ourselves. 
And yet, self-denial is essential to being a disciple of Christ. At times, it even can be a sacrifice. For more than a decade, Sam had operated a successful counseling business in a mid-sized industrial city in the southeast. The contracts were with major corporations, which had brought growth and brought much growth to the areas. The counseling center offered a variety of services, but it seems most of the clients that wanted help had drinking problems. The center's contracts with each corporation enabled employees to seek help with a guarantee of complete secrecy. Each employee's problems and progress were treated but completely confidential. And it was well that each client's file were for eyes, the counseling staff only, no one else. And they were sworn to secrecy. One day, the executive vice president of the large firm under contract made an appointment with Sam. To Sam's shock and amazement, this executive demanded to see the files for his employees. Sam told him politely but firmly this was impossible. The files were confidential. The vice president's face became red and then spoke louder and harsher to Sam as he repeatedly insisted that the files about his employees be delivered to him immediately. Sam continued to refuse. Finally, the vice president stood up. He moved toward the door, and as he touched the door knob, he turned and paused, and he said to Sam, Very well. Since you insist, tomorrow our legal department will contact you and terminate our contract with you immediately. How many of our employees do you suppose have availed themselves to your services. Sam again reminded him that all his records were confidential. No matter, said the VP, you won't be seeing them anymore unless you give me their files right now, and I mean it right now. Sam suddenly had a vision of his counseling practice collapsing like a building, demolished. He pictured his own personal finances reduced to rubble. Then he addressed the executive in a measured voice. Sir, as much as I respect you, how many times do I have to tell you? It can't be done. These files are confidential. My center works with your employees, and everything is completely confidential. You will never, never, never receive my files. Vice President then walked back, took his seat again. Okay, he said in a subdued voice. If that's the way it is, then I guess it's safe to tell you why I have come. I have a drinking problem, and I need your help. Now think about this. Sam's running this prosperous counseling center, and he's helping people. Then all of a sudden, the vice president comes in and tells him and demands that he give this. And he had great authority over Sam, but Sam refused. And you know, really, I thought about this in a way. Sam really was looking at sheer death because he was going to lose his practice. He was going to lose everything. But he didn't obey what the vice president said. At this time, I felt like that Sam basically picked up his cross and carried it because he was going to be destroyed. If he didn't obey what this vice president wanted, but he still refused. He had given his word to his clients that everything was confidential. It's like many times you go and talk to a pastor or you talk to an attorney, whoever you, you want to believe that what you tell them is confidential. And it should be. It's one of the things that I feel like that a lot of times used to, you didn't have to get a contract drawn up. Your word was your bond. 
people shook hands and they agreed. And this is what they did many years ago. We don't do that today. We draw up a contract. And so, if you think about Sam, he could have folded to the insistence of this vice president, but he did not. He was willing to walk the way. It wasn't going to be easy, but he was going to have to stand up to the vice president. Sam held out at the cost of maybe losing everything that he had. Like Jesus, Sam met people where they were. And like Jesus, he showed them the compassion. I believe when his people came in, he showed them the face of Christ. He was a Christian. And he could not fail these people. He would not fail these people because he had given them his word. Many times when we have to take up our cross, it's going to be at a cost. I've known people that have had been in relationships and they said, I don't know, I don't know if my girlfriend or my husband or my wife is going to accept my faith. But I have to walk the way of the Lord and I have to live my life for the Lord. Many times it's seen as an example to the spouse or to the girlfriend or boyfriend. Many times it is not. I know a situation recently that came up and um, this couple, they were engaged to be married and the more this person realized that this other person was such a strong Christian, it just wasn't going to happen. Because they did not have that same faith and they didn't feel like that they could go that way because more and more this man's faith was growing stronger. So they dissolved their relationship. Now they've met someone that is a Christian. So we're called to pick up our cross. We're called to follow Jesus. And we're really called to die to ourselves. If you are so puffed up with yourself, then think about it. It's going to be all about you. It's not going to be about Christ and what he's doing in your life. Over and over, I tell you, <clears throat> you probably get tired of hearing it, but we need to be an example to people. And we are a living example. As Jesus was a living example to the disciples, and to those who flock to hear him. Our churches should be full, but they're not. It's concerning. Because the world tends to want to start going more toward the darkness than toward the light. We have to be much like Sam in our lives. We have to be like him. We can't be like the young businessman who wanted, he wanted the easy way to get to success. Wasn't going to happen. Jesus offers us a cross and to take up our cross and follow him. Fred Osnum was a Frenchman whose life was, he was only 40 uh, years and it, oh, and it ended in 1853. The France in which he lived remained torn as a result of the French Revolution in the late 1700s. The Roman Catholic Church had suffered loss, not only property and power, but many lives, and its leadership had become extremist. As a result, the church had even Christianity itself was treated with distrust by the working class and was sustained by many intellectuals. They wanted no part of it. Austin was in his late teens when he arrived at the University of Paris. He went there to study law. But what he just found at his shop and the atmosphere of the university was bitterness and hostility toward the Christian faith. 
Many of his students, they would gather together and they would worship in a way secretly, but he found that the other students had the stain toward those of faith. The group engaged in many debates and public controversy over Christianity. Then one day, a student threw at Osman this decisive challenge. You Christians are fine at arguing. Well, what do you ever do? It was at that moment that Osman was struck with a basic insight. Christianity was not just about ideas. It was about deeds that were inspired by the love. He resolved to start a fellowship, which he did, and it was later the fellowship became known as St. Vincent de Paul Society. Osman had to die to himself. He picked up his cross and he followed after Jesus. The poor people of Paris all around him were plentiful, but he decided that he would reach out to them. Not only had to cross the tracks, he had to cross the tracks of bitterness and the division of hatred that he had seen in the world. The tracks he had crossed was little known by most of the clergy or the intellectuals of his time. They wanted no part of it. But he stepped out in faith, open-handed, lied to God, even though his hands were empty. He had no social reform programs, and yet he decided, it is the battle of those who have nothing and those who have too much. It is the violent collision of wealth and poverty which makes the earth tremble under our feet. Osman was able to minister to not only the poor, those so less fortunate, but also to the Christian community. He later earned his doctorates in law and literature and became a distinguished and popular lecturer at the University of Paris. He believed strongly that the church must overcome the attitude of isolation and nostalgia. In his time, this was viewed, he is viewed that we had to connect with one another. All ages, races, colors, all. We had to separate the church from being politically full of bigotry. That we wanted to be justice for all, and that we wanted to serve all, and the poor, and that all were welcome to come into the house of God. Sadly, many times we as Christians, we put ourselves on a pedestal, somewhat of a pedestal, and we think that we're better than other people. But we all get up every morning, we all put our clothes on the same way. We all eat food for nourishment. But we're called to love. We're called to love one another. And I think today, I feel like that what happened with uh, Osnum and Sam, they both illustrated their pivotal points in their lives, that their lives changed. And we must take up our cross and follow Jesus. Well, what does that look like? Well, I believe Paul's words said that to us today in Romans. And I want to read it again. Romans 12. Tell us how we are to live and also what it means to take up our cross and follow Christ. Don't just pretend to love others. Really love them. Hate what is wrong. Hold tightly to what is good. Love each other with genuine, genuine affection and take delight in honoring others. Never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. Rejoice in our confident hope. Be patient in the trouble and keep on praying. 
When God's people are in need, be ready to help them. Always be eager to practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Don't curse them. Pray that God will bless them. Be happy with those who are happy and weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with each other. Don't be too proud to enjoy the company of ordinary people. And don't think you know it all. Never pay back evil with more evil. Do things in such a way that everyone can see you are honorable. Do all that you can live in peace with everyone. Dear friends, never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. For the scripture says, I will take revenge. I will pay them back, says the Lord. Instead, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. In doing this, you will be heaping burning coals of shame on their heads. Don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. The words of Paul, the words that I believe God calls us to live by, to love our enemies. So what do you think? Can we live this way? Are we living this way? Something for us to think about. And we don't just do it on Sunday. This is a seven day a week, 365 days a year pass. So it's not easy. It can be very difficult. But I believe if we could read that scripture and text every day, it may change the way we live our lives. Loving others, loving our enemies. Loving those who persecute us. We can conquer evil by doing good. And God calls us to take up our cross follow him and he calls us to be good let's go to the Lord in prayer <laughs> Heavenly Father what a gift and blessing it is for us to confess Christ Jesus as our Lord and Savior thank you for making yourself known to us Thank you for sending the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us and to convict us of our sins. Thank you, Lord, for calling us to live a holy and righteous life. Help us to declare, like Peter, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Lord, we pray that we would continue to be guided by your truth. Help us to be living sacrifices before others. May we live our lives as a testimony of your truth as we take up our cross and follow you. For it is in Christ's name that we pray, the name that is above every name. Amen. And I you please stand for our hymn of departure. Joyful, joyful, we adore you. Hymn number 544.
bless us as we leave this place. Give us inner peace and clarity. Give us a heart that loves others, loves you, and help us to love one another. Give us energy and faith to take up our cross and follow you forevermore. Amen.